next stroke, stroke number five, I call on your toes. And the reason I call it that is because I tend to work for this stroke very much vertical to the paper surface. And this is so that I can actually use the tip of the pencil. And I've actually sharpened it this time to get a really good point. If you work with something like trees at the distance and their conifers, you want some very delicate edges for these. I would start at the top and I very gently zigzag my way down from one side to the other. I'm hardly touching the paper at all really because I'm trying to get just the tip of the pencil. But as I'm working, you will see that I turn the pencil. I'm turning it so that I always get the sharpest part of the lead. So I'm going down and out and across and I'm bearing in mind that trees are not even. They have the elements to contend with, and certainly on the lower branches they may have animals rubbing up against them, and also their uneven growth. So I'm coming down thinking about an interesting silhouette, trying to make it uneven, random, and some areas perhaps even leaving a bit of a gap so that it does look more natural. But through it all I've got to think of the main trunk and the support and how the branches come off. The other type is where we go uphill. I start from the base, I'm still doing a zigzag, but I'm thinking of just one side and the silhouette shape of that one side as it goes up. Then I come back down again, still zigzagging, and now a bit more conscious of going through to the centre, so I'm getting some up and down strokes that are going into the centre. Again, I turn the pencil now and again if I'm feeling it's getting a little bit too blunt. Up to the top and down, up again. So you see it's a little bit of a different movement to the other tree, but I'm still getting the same feeling of these shadow recess shapes. On this tree, I'm going to have a light side. So I keep it dark below where the sun isn't going to reach it. And I think of the way they splay out to the left, then come towards us, and then we'll go out to the right and I'm up and down and slowly with the same stroke application lifting the pressure and I'll go across now to the light side. If this had a dark tree behind it I would have to think carefully of how to bring that light side forward. So if I had a, a dark tree here which has a shadow side like that coming there I would go up to and away from it and in. So at this point I'm thinking of cutting in behind that bush or tree and here I'm thinking about a shadow side similar to that. So I'm coming up again. So we've got two thought patterns going on here, how we get the tree behind the other one and how it relates. I'm hardly touching the paper now, I'm just indicating one or two shadows on that side and I'll put a little trunk to hold it up and a relationship to the ground. And the same will happen to this one. And again, relating it to the ground. So that's on your toes. But on your toes applies to anything where you really need the point of your pencil. So if I wanted an uneven line down the light side of a, a tree that has perhaps a shadow side here, and then nothing dark behind it, I would put on your toes little marks to give the texture of that tree trunk. And there's your trunk coming forward. But if that's sky and that's the light side of the tree, you'll need to go right on your toes and very gently define that light edge. The next stroke I call the crisscross stroke. It's based on a cross but we have to think about how to use that cross so that it isn't too obvious at the end of our image. And one of the ways I do that is by keeping pressure on the paper throughout the application. So I press into a cross, keeping that side of the cross, which is really a cross that is randomly placed. So I'm not trying to get a lot of little crosses, which we would recognize, I'm just doing a crisscross movement. This is useful for the heavier foliage, the trees that are close up. I usually use them when I want to get the basic silhouette. 
and you notice how lightly I'm pressing on the paper to start with. This is to give me the silhouette without it being obvious that I'm actually using crosses. So this is the crisscross movement. Now sometimes I may be one stroke that way and perhaps a couple almost a zigzag before I cross again. So keep them random and I'm also having regard for the structure that's going to hold it up and the outer silhouette shape to give interest. And you're going to crisscross behind and that is the dark shadow recess shape. So I want it really dark in the innermost places and then blending away as it gets lighter. So I'll have another dark in here, crisscross it dark and then slowly blend out into the lighter area. I'm going to put dark crisscross there and pull down a twig or a branch and pull down from there and push up and I'm pushing up rather unevenly with zigzag strokes and twisting. And then I'm going to crisscross up to there and out. And these are much bigger leaves than you would get with the put push pull stroke. And we get the darker canopy coming in. Sometimes on this side we have the sunlight hitting it to such an extent that you can leave the white paper and there might be a dark tree behind. So again I would tone in the dark tree behind, still with that crisscross movement, and that brings out the light side. And turning the pencil onto the sharp side I'll just increase some of the width of these twigs and branches and bring it down and just a few little crisscross randomly placed strokes to finish off. And there you have a different type of tree. Now come to the seventh stroke. This is the tick and flick. It's based upon a tick quite simply. But again, as with the previous stroke, we don't want to see a load of ticks. What we want to see is grass or anything that needs this delicacy of a tapering tip. So if I was thinking of grass, again I'm listening to the stroke as I often do, tick 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 tick, and sometimes a little turn at the end. And this ticking and pulling down as I do this in order to let some light grasses come in front of the dark and also to look into it for some negative shapes because they are so important. So I'm ticking along and pulling it down and that can represent grass. But it's also helpful for things like folds in cloth. If I did a series of ticks, that could be the top of a piece of curtaining. I could then do one or two of these curves and pull down and then do some pull downs and look again for the little negatives in there and then bring down the bigger folds of curtain. So I'm incorporating a grazing stroke now as I graze down and also a bit of grazing up there perhaps looking for a little bit of dark in there and a little bit of dark in there and that could go like that and you can see with a little tie at the end, how you could do a curtain. Tick and flick is also very useful for hair. If you have a donkey's mane or anything that stands up straight, you might find that ticking along on a contour and then a few little pull downs could give you an interesting area of mane. Some of it could be turned over with a dark beneath it and then you can get your pull down strokes as it comes down like that. And that could be hair. So now we've reached the final stroke. I call this one up to and away. And the reason I've done this stroke, or I should refer to it really as a stroke application, is because quite often people find it difficult 
to actually have a clear light edge on a light image. They encroach upon it with something they're putting in the background. I'll take something quite delicate like a piece of wire. If we see a piece of wire that's perhaps at the side of a hedgerow or um, out in the um, garden perhaps even, some people don't know quite how to make the wire look as if it's in front of a bush or something that's growing behind. So what I do is put in the light that's behind the wire against that contrast of the wire and then when there's a bush behind and that's dark I come up to and away from it. And this is counter change. So I'm going to put my hand above it to do this and I'm zigzagging down towards the wire. And the reason I come towards it, up to it, is so that I don't encroach upon what I want to remain as light. So I'm coming down to the wire and if I find the pencil is getting a little bit too chisel shaped I will turn it for the sharp side and then I'll tone away, up to and away. And all this stroke is doing at the moment is establishing the light wire. I'm not thinking about what that dark is going to be at the moment. Now I'm coming up to, from below, and away. Again, up to, and away. Once I've done that, I can start thinking about what is going to be behind. And it could be a bush where I would either want to crisscross or push upwards. So I'm going to do the pushing upward stroke, thinking of a silhouette. And little pushes. And then pull down. And then coming from underneath. And I'm very gently going to look at the area where they join so that I can come out and make a bit more interest to the silhouette down below. And then up again. And pull down. And if the wire was coming beyond that, I would take it off. And then I've got the light wire against the dark background and the dark wire against the light. Now I've got to fill in whatever I want this to be, whether it's a dark silhouette or whether I want some lighter shapes on it as well. And you can see how that wire now will continue across with it being light in front of the dark. One of the easiest ways to understand this is if there was something like the trunk of a tree here. And I would just go up to the light side of the trunk and away. Here I could crisscross away. And up to this side of the tree and again crisscross away. And then a little bit darker perhaps at the base and have that the other side as well. And then I could do the zigzag on the shadow side of the tree, very gently, and down into the root system. And here we can do a few tick and flicks and make some more interesting leaves pushing out. And slowly that tree trunk is going to come forward. So there we are, there are the eight basic strokes in pencil either the very soft 9B or a slightly harder 8B if you want finer lines. And I'm using exactly the same stroke application when I work in watercolour, which I'll be showing you in another programme. now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. The extended version of today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.